Hey community, welcome to another video. Today I want to give you a very basic um, outline with a prompt as a sample project. And what we're going to look at today is taking um, a small data set, some quantities and some rates, let's assume they're from five other projects that you've been working on. Now, the item of work is not particularly important here. The data that I have generated is theoretical. Um, in other words, I've just made it up for the purposes of demonstrating the prompt. But what it's going to do is just highlight the capabilities of specific use case um, examples that you can utilize and think about your day-to-day -day activities in quantity surveying. Particularly, this example would be from someone operating in the consultant space where you want to take data and predict to generate a cost model to predict for future projects for the same item of work. So we're going to do this in ChatGPT, but I also, before I start, want to show you um, an outline of a, another um, AI model, which is currently taking um, the AI space by storm. And this is actually called DeepSeek. Now, you can utilize this model at chat.deepseek.com up, up here. Now, this is a reasoning model. I've clicked on here. I'll unclick uh, to get it activated. The reasoning model R1. And this is part of DeepSeek version 3. This was released in January 25. Uh, DeepSeek itself has been around since late 2023, but this current version is currently making the news as being just as comparable to the OpenAI model. And I'll show you in a minute some of the data around that. And the kind of impressive, to, to, to be honest, thing with this is that DeepSeek, it's from China, and this whole... Um, LLM was actually developed with a budget of something like five and a half million US dollars. So compared to what uh, OpenAI are doing, this is very, very low investment to get out the results that they are getting. Now let's just have a look at that. So this information is actually from the DeepSeek website, so we'll take it as a given. The DeepSeek version 3, um, there's others here for comparisons, but I want to focus here the GPT version 4.0, which we're going to utilize in a, in a little while for a, a very basic prompt. You'll see that when it comes to maths, maths 500 EM, that's a, a benchmark, you'll see that version 3 DeepSeek is operating at 90.2 compared to ChatGPT version 4 at 74.6. This is very impressive, by the way, as a, as a benchmark to this particular um, method of benchmark. So it's, you know, 20 uh, points ahead of ChatGPT. Um, I can't currently show you the output that I'm going to use in ChatGPT right now. That was the intention because... Uh, this is currently free and the server is just busy. I've been trying for some time to get it to perform and get a result, but it, it, it just says that it's busy. So I'll come back and I'll do a comparable video under DeepSeek for the same prompt, just so that you can see the comparisons. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to get into the prompts and we're going to look at this very basic prompt in ChatGPT. So... It's a prompt that I have just um, copy. Um, I've, I've, I've written it, so I'll just copy it into here. And it is very, very simple. It's a theoretical data set. I will provide you with five quantities and rates. I want you to create a multi-linear regression model to predict this rate for future projects. Here is the data. So quantity rate, and then these are the quantities. These are the rates. So I want it. I'm setting the scene. I wanted to generate a multi-linear regression equation to measure if in future I want to predict this item of work, I will import a quantity and I will get a rate based on the analysis of five similar previous projects. Very useful tool. So we'll let it do its stuff. It's analyzing. 
depending on how busy the model is, it sometimes take a, takes a while to actually think about things, which is fine. So do we. And here we go. It's now providing us the output. So based on that data set, chat GPT is quite confidently telling us that it's 5432.25 minus 8.28 times the quantity. So in other words, if I take this minus that by the quantity, I will get the new rate. So the mean error, 45, mean squared error, 2053, root 45. So I want to do a couple of things here. I just want to um, please provide me with a, with a sample output. Assume I have a quantity of, excuse my spelling, of 131 number. Let's correct that and press action. Let's see what chat GPT now says. So there we go. If I had 131 number of this particular work item, my predicted rate would be 434822. Very useful tool, almost instantaneous. Now, one thing I need to be cautious of if I'm running multilinear regression around data sets, particularly when I have low uh, numbers in the data set like I have generated here, only five um, points of reference, not particularly strong. If we had you know, 25, 50, 100 or, or more, it would be more useful. But I now need to know what, what is the R squared of this equation. I need to know this for anyone involved or has used uh, regression, whether single or multi, in the past. The R squared coefficient actually tells us how um, confident um, the data is. So the closer that we get to one, it means the more accurate the outputs are going to be. So we want to be looking for as close to one as possible. If we're getting away from one, it means maybe we don't have a very strong data set and we need to be a little bit cautious on the um, outputs that we receive. But once we know the coefficient, and I, I don't know because, um, as I said, I just made up this data, so it'll be interesting to see what the R2 is. Let's go. There you go. It can't even tell us the R2, which I, I don't believe. Um, let's try again. Sometimes you just have to be persistent with the prompts. There we go. So the value is 0 0.522. So that means that 52.2%, um, it's not very high, truth be told. So in this particular case, we would probably need to uh, uh, a little bit cautiously on using that and probably just drop back to a manual method of analyzing this in a bit more detail and looking at other statistical methods to give us a better degree of confidence as to what the rate might be. But hopefully what you will see here is more about the demonstrable position of what you can use chat gpt for in terms of requesting analysis so that you can make better decisions in this case the decision would be on this that the data set is not particularly good to be using for future predictions in actual fact if um, this was a particular data set for me i would probably be looking to analyze further what my cost drivers of this particular component of work really were was there any or you know is there any further information that i could extract to try and predict what a cost driver of that would be um if i couldn't muster up more than five data sets for that particular item of work. The more data sets you have, the better, that's for sure. But 
you know, um, where you have very common items of work, it's probably easier, but where you don't, it becomes less so. But then, you know, the beauty of this is it's really highlighting to us where we need to dig deeper. That's what I get from this particular prompt. And that's what you can also get from using this chat GPT or similar deep seek or any other to really help you focus on your decision making process. And this really is where AI is coming into itself because you can do this in a fraction of the time as you would want to do this in a traditional sense or maybe you've never used it in a traditional sense and this opens up a new sort of doorway to analyze and think about things from a, a very different perspective. So I'll close it there. I hope that helps. This is just one very, very simple um, use case scenario. We're going to be looking and generating more complex ones as we get more into this community. But I need to take, you know, sort of it step by step on the basis that not everyone is familiar with AI and what it can do. So this is more about just breaking you in gently and showing you the very sort of outline use cases. And then we're going to build on that further as the days and weeks and months go on so that you can really start to see how you can leverage AI to get tremendous results from your day-to-day -day QS work. Okay, I'll see you on the next one, folks.